600 Juliet Pop, up to 294, turn away down there, clear for takeoff. Uh, parking brake as required, baggage secure. We're going to check our fuel. We're going to inspect the right wing, left wing. We're looking at the control surfaces, free and secure. Checking the hinges, navigation lights, checking the fuel visibility and the caps. So uh, we'll go ahead and walk around and check that and uh, check the baggage door. Tie downs are removed proper uh, inflation of the tires check the tires brake pads I always look at um, a plane like this you just want to make sure everything's uh, straight and there's no dripping like wet marks on the ground so we'll go ahead and uh, we'll continue our walk around we'll look at the fuselage check our rudder trim tab tail wheel um, antennas we want to look down the the surface of the airplane make sure there's no dents or wrinkles and uh, we're just going to make our way over here continue to check this wing also and let's check the propeller we'll check the oil levels make sure the belts are tight and uh, one thing that I had happen to me one time is there was a fuel line that was loose and it came disconnected during flight and uh, luckily we we're near the airport where we can make a landing right away um, so let's go back in the cockpit pro is on electrical equipment is off bus one and two are off fuel selectors on both and then we're going to start with battery so quarter inch on the throttle mixture this in cut off. We're going to hold the standby switch for 10 seconds. Test the lamp. You can hear the battery starting up. Of course, we're not going to turn on our avionics till we bus E volts. Standby battery enunciator. We're good. Propeller area. Clear prop. I'm going to turn our beacon on. Let people know that we're starting up. We get the master switches on, beacons on, and mags to start. Okay, we've got our ATIS. We're going to go ahead and um, got our flaps up. And we're going to set our heading. We're going to be heading west. And let's just look at our map here. So, looks like our heading is about 27, so that's where we're going to put our heading bug. And it looks like it's pretty much there, so we're going to leave it right there. And then, taxi area clear, we're going to throttle up, apply brakes, and then we're going to get our, check our ATIS one more time. And then we'll uh, go ahead and taxi out. Visibility 1-0, sky condition, clear, temperature 3, dew point minus 1, altimeter 3021, arriving and departing runway 16, visual approaches in use, read backhaul runway assignments and hold short instructions, advise on initial contact you have formation hotel, Reading Municipal Airport, ATIS Information Hotel, 1246 Zulu. Wind calm. Visibility 10. Sky condition clear. Temperature 3. Dew point minus 1. Altimeter 3021. Arriving and departing runway 16. Visual approaches in use. 
Read backhaul runway assignments and hold short instructions. Advise on initial contact you have information hotel. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to keep hitting this. I'm going to do my startup or my uh, check on my mags, my engine run up right here. So we'll go up to about 2000. A good drop. See the drop? Nice drop. About 70. Nice drop on the right. Check our pressures, oil pressure, oil temps, volts, amps are good, fuel quantity is good, vacuum's good. We'll idle back down. Trim tab set for takeoff. Go ahead and throw our two notches of flop, flaps in. And before takeoff, we'll uh, go ahead once we're over at the runway and set everything else. It's hot. We're gonna leave our door open. Ready in municipal tower or municipal ground. Cessna 169 Joey Papa at GA parking. Request taxi to red runway 16 with hotel for west departure. No, 169 is really Papa Reading Grounds, runway 16, Park City at Lima, Delta 3, Delta, cross runway 12 at Lima. Crossing Lima, Delta 3 to Delta 169, Julia Papa. Sir, 6 Fox, Shazulu, contact Oakland Center. Over to Oakland Center, 756 Fox, Shazulu. Okay, taxi. Or taxi flaps her up. Radio checks status. Okay, we're good. We did our engine run up, and we're gonna start our taxi. We're gonna cross Lima, which is right up here. So, conjunction tower, Legion three eighty three, on short two two at Alpha. Legion 383, uh, Junction Tower, cross runway 22 at, well, actually, uh, runway 29 are clear for takeoff. Uh, uh, runway 29 are clear for takeoff, Legion 383, thanks. Seattle Center, Sky High 918 for uh, Sky 3 ready. We're going to cross Lima. Sky 918, pass to the sky. Three. Like Great, thank you. Good night. Quick. And we got D3 here to Delta. Fernando 758 Hotel, no jump because they're receiving you as in other county. Report out for cancellation of this stretch here from this frequency or on the ground within five minutes of landing on 122.2. Change to budget frequency approved. Afternoon, Eagle Clearance, November 2102 two Whiskey Citation Plant, Golf, IFR Clearance, Aspen. 
Over to departure, Legion 383. Salt Lake Brown, DC, up to 1599, Alpha 5, Sport of Bravo, information, Echo, 10. Salt Lake 1599, Salt Lake City Grounds, runway 34 left, taxi via Bravo. Runway 34 left to via Bravo, Delta 1599. Denver departure, Legion 383, Junction 7, uh, le leaving 7,700 for 14,000. Legion 383, Denver departure, radar contact. Station 202 Whiskey, clear to Aspen Airport, uh, Junction 6 departure, Kremlin. As filed, maintain 15,000, expect flight level 2201, 0 minutes after departure. Uh, Denver, center frequency 120.47, squawk 6330, Eagle Ground. Okay, Joe Tuskegee is clear to the Aspen Airport, Gypsum 6 departure, Kremlin, as filed, 15,000, 22,000, and 10 minutes, 120.47, 6330. 0 2 Whiskey, read back, correct. Reading Municipal Tower, Cessna 169, Julia Papa at runway 16, ready for takeoff. 169, Julia Papa, ready, tower on course approved, runway 16, clear for takeoff. 169, Julia Papa, clear for takeoff. Skyline 6, Russia Zulu, confirm you are uh, continuing your climb to 1000. Runway 16. Still need some adjustments on these. Entered runway 16. 6,900 feet remaining. Uh, Allegiant 383, contact Denver Center, 120.47. Denver Center, 120.47, Allegiant 383. And we'll see how they work with... I'm still not impressed with the rudder pedals. Any comments below, you can leave your comments and give us... Legion 383, Denver Center, call and maintain flight level 230. Okay, we're going to rotate at 64. And we didn't even have to pull out. And we were able to uh, take off right away. And we've cleared, so we're going to go ahead and pitch for our climb. And you want to pitch to 70, just off the horizon. Fuel pumps off. Double tower, double 1599, ready to go, run one, two, four left. Salt Lake City Tower on departure, fly heading 280, uh, runway 34 left, clear for takeoff. Fly heading 280, runway 34, much clear for takeoff, Delta 1599. Eagle Brown, citation 210, Twisky Park, south ramp uh, in the middle, ready to taxi Yankee. Uh, citation 210, Twisky, Eagle Ground, runway 25, Park City Alpha. Alpha 250, Twisky. Okay, we got Eureka Field in, we're going direct. Let's look at on our heading. 
Fellas, you want a cookie? Got cookies. Got cookies here. Now we gotta climb pretty quick because we're gonna put the turtle cam on. He is sound asleep. When you go wake up, you got a cookie here. He'll do anything for a cookie. So we gotta get up to about 8,900 feet. Gotta get more cookies here. Um, this is cookies. Let's see if we can get them. So the 1599 contact Salt Lake City departure. Contact Salt Lake City departure, Salt Lake 1599. Alicia 383, contact Denver Center 133.67. Okay, look it out there. Look out the, the window. Salt Lake City departure, Delta 1599, 5100, climbing 100,000. Delta 1599, Salt Lake City departure, contact, climb and maintain level 230. Climb and maintain level 230, 1599. Okay, we're going to go ahead and shut them off for now. We don't need to listen to them. Although we still are in the Class D. Climb and maintain level 270. planes around us. Go boy. Go boy. Okay, that's the tuttle cam. We got cookies right here. See? Delta 1599, clear direct scan, just resume normal speed. Direct scan, normal speed, Delta 1599. Okay, let's get back on course, guys. So just to give you a, a little backstory about my flying, I was a life flight paramedic for about 20 years with lifelink three. Eagle Tower citation, 210 Twiskies ready for departure, runway 25. We're 210 Twiskies, Eagle Tower, runway 25, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, 250. And that was a uh, pretty big company, so they were nationwide. We were based out of Minneapolis, St. Paul area, and um, did a lot of flights. I've got over many thousands of uh, hours of flying to be honest um, let's take a quick view out there we got the sunset coming up but anyways uh, love that job and uh, that's where I got some of my passion to fly because I flew in Sikorsky F-76s Bell Long Rangers, which was a common helicopter I had experience in a Bell 412. Um, I even had, um, let's put the dog cam on here. I had experience in um, a lot of Dolphins, Augustas, you name it, helicopter wise. Fixed wing, I was in. Lear's Cessna Conquest 441, a Cessna 404. Um, I'm going to turn on my train here just to make sure we don't make sure we clear the mountains here. Um, and then um, and I'm going to turn on my autopilot and set the heading, but continue the climb. But uh, yeah, it was a great career. Um, just to give you a story of why I got my pilot's license, um, I lost my brother 
my older brother and sister-in-law and they were with another couple on Valentine's night in 2003 and uh, they were taken off out of uh, a small airport in Wisconsin. They, uh, it was pretty tough and uh, went through a lot and um, it was very traumatic. So uh, NTSB, excuse me, oops, cockpit management, GoPros. So NTSB never came up with a uh, what actually happened, and uh, so and so what the story was um, it was cold. It was about 30 below that night, Valentine's night, of course. They took off, and uh, and it was very very tough. So, um, they were in a Piper complex air aircraft. He had a student. They were, uh, the gals, his wife, and the other guy's wife were in the back. And, um, and so anyways, um, I took up flying to figure out the, the physics of flying, what could have possibly caused the crash. I landed there at one time. I did the actual takeoff, which was pretty nerve-wracking, and um, just knowing that my brother had taken off from there and uh, had that incident, so that just gives you a little backstory. The whole purpose of, um, of me building this channel is to really uh, help others with flying, but really I built the simulator for the purpose of getting my instrument rating. And I figured uh, I could do my approaches with Pilot Edge and do my ILS approaches, get my radio time in. The more you go through the, the system of doing the motions and that constant, um, I don't have a G1000 in my plane. I don't even have a plane, but uh, that's the idea is to get a plane with the G1000. I'd, I'd like to get a Mooney. And my goal with this channel is to build this channel so big that I could pay those payments or pay cash for an airplane. So I do marketing and uh, so I'm very familiar with, um, with building a YouTube channel. So I appreciate your subscribes, your comments. Uh, even your condolences but they're not needed and uh, and just uh, any professional wisdom I greatly appreciate it and uh, so it's just great to know um, but, so I've got some of my lights off I'm leaving my strobe my beacons on my nav uh, I'll even leave my taxi light on but I got my landing lights off now uh, once we get up to a cruise, we're going to set power at 75% and uh, we're going to pitch and trim and of course uh, Got autopilot. I'm going to climb up to about 9,000 feet and um, We got a, a, a climb rate right now or uh, 
VY. We're in the VY of about 70. That's straight of climb. And um, so we're doing good there. I always uh, like to have my checklists always readily available and I usually stick them in a pocket. So we're looking at um, 74 nautical miles, 58 minutes. So nice thing about autopilot is hands off and let it let it go. So I own a few companies myself right now. I own Par Media Group. I've got a brand new company called Varexa. Par Media Group's a marketing ad agency. Varexa is a VR and AR augmented reality company. So what we do is we uh, do smart glasses for manufacturing and construction. So uh, it's been a, a great thing. And uh, I own a company called Full Motion Marketing that started from the National Clean Air Green Tour, promoting green products. And uh, that's been successful. We, all we do in that company is market green, sustainable uh, businesses. So we might have to uh, get around this. Just gonna trim to get our climb here. There we go. 74 is ideal for our climb because then we get some good altitude. We'll get back on our heading with our autopilot. Boy, Tattles. <laughs> Got the puppy cam going. So we got some beautiful weather. It's probably gonna get a little bit of the sun coming in. And we set the time on this to basically be right around the sunset. So when we're coming into California, be right at sunset. So we're at 8,000, we're going to level at 9. Throw on the next red if we want. You got traffic on. So Eureka, just looking at it, um, I'm going to pull it up here, Murrayfield, we're going to be on Unicom, so 122.70. And we don't have an ATIS there, but let's look at a... Uh, There's an airport near there, KACV, which is California Redwood Coast. So we can pick up our ATIS there. It's actually got an AWOS. Let's try it. Mm. 
and being all good enough to uh, our cruising altitude. I'm gonna focus in on that. I'm gonna pull back the power to 75%. And we're going to level off. Okay, we're good on the, make sure it levels off. Okay, so we're going to go with 118, 525. Being where we're ways out, we may, might not be able to pick it up. One thing I like to look at is airports along the route. Look at visual references along the route. Right now, we should uh, see a like a power line down to our right. sure why our headiness. I think it's trying to get back on. There we go. So we've got some visual references, and we even have a Lonnie Pool field off to our right, and I do see that. Look for uh, power lines, railroads, rivers, like intersecting rivers. There should be Douglas City off to our right coming up in a little bit. We're over. Whiskey Town National Recreation Area. So you can see the visual references below off to the right of the wing. That's what we're following. We're following that road. So that gives you a perspective of what um, we're seeing. 
this is my buddy right here. Okay, we'll shut shut that one off. I'm gonna shift over to our Unicom. We probably want to monitor because we've got a class D over here, airspace. That's Seattle Center. CTEF is one, two, three. We're going to monitor that. We'll do that down here. Tuttles quit storing. It's Supposed to be helping out on the not much of a pilot dog there. Not much of a pilot dog. He's sleeping the whole flight. Forty-two nautical. start snoring in a little bit here. He likes flying so he will snore. He likes the sound of the aircraft. So we got two panels here. We have um, this was from uh, Logitech. And uh, I just like the switches better than what's on the uh, honeycomb yoke. Um, they're just easier to read and feel more real to me. But um, the honeycomb yoke is nice just because the switches are in the right place. They'd be over to your left. They wouldn't be in the center here. And um, eventually we're going to switch them. So. Fifty nautical miles. That's where we took off. Got Reading, which is a new airport for Powdedge. And we can see if we match this nav system to our iPad, we can see that. It's exactly at 50 nautical, 50 nautical. Twenty-five minutes estimated, twenty-five point 
two, six, and 25 here. So I think it'd be the same, same readings. Go to train set. You see it picks up everything we need to go. And we've got some mountains over just on our approach into Eureka. We're going to be using runway 30. And we can check that right now just to see runway in use. Runway 30 right traffic. There's no wind. 3,000 feet, 75 foot, good asphalt. And look at our procedures. Approaches, our modems, no towns, out of service. So the VASI is out and runway 30. And we can see the weather is seven miles. Sky's clear. And uh, we can set our altimeter. It's based off of California Redwood. Cali Redwood Humboldt Cohen. Wind calm. Visibility more than 10. Sky clear. Temperature 140. Dew point minus 15. Altimeter 2992. Cali Redwood Humboldt Cohen. They're saying altimeter 2992. More than 10. Sky and clear. That's It's fine. It's supposed to be helping out on the not much of a pilot dog there. Not much of a pilot dog is sleeping the whole flight. Forty two knockoffs. Cool thing about four flight you can record your screen your iPad and then you'll see that we've got it embedded into the into the plane here so love the sunset we set that perfect once we get over these mountain ranges right here we'll uh You'll see the coast. I can start seeing the water already. And um, we'll be landing right here, right on the coast. So it looks like uh, 
20 minutes up, 10 minutes up, we're going to start our descent. So we'll be about 20 miles from there. Okay. It is what it is. See if we can speed this show up. We'll run it. We've got plenty of fuel. We'll run it right on the edge. And it looks like we've got a small private airport down to our left here. Yeah, I see it over here. So we're using the real Simgear G1000. We got the Honeycomb Yoke, Logitech throttle trim, Logitech rudder, and use an Alienware uh, system. Look at our pre pre landing checklist. Throttle down, airspeed 100, mixture rich. Carp heat on. Fuel pump on. Gas on the fullest, primer lock, landing lights on. run through that one more time before 10 miles south. I like to uh, run through it in my head, you know? So. Okay, we're having troubles with one of the road cars. I should have put the other card in it. Fifteen minutes. I'm gonna start bringing our nose down. And we're going to have a structure of about 3,000 feet, HL.
after the descent. Throttle back a little bit. Get back on the blind slope. I can see that structure straight in front of us on the top of that mountain. Usually they've got towers, cell phone towers. Let's see some lights. One thing we can't do is can't descend too quick here because I'm gonna level out at about 8,500 here until we get over this range here. And I definitely don't want to climb. So we're gonna go in right over there. We're almost a straight on approach, but I'm gonna Pull it off to the left here so that I can do a straight in approach to 3 0. Murrayfield traffic, SSL 169 Julie Papa. 23 miles to the east inbound for runway 30 Murray Field traffic. So we're doing Unicom. You just announce your, there's no tower here. Just announce it, what our intentions are. And what we're doing here is uh, we call who we're calling, who we are what our intentions are, or where we're at, I should say, and then what our intentions are, coming in for runway 30, and then uh, you end it with Murray Field traffic in case somebody didn't catch on to that. So we've got a beautiful sunset. Once we get over this range right here, we can start dropping down a little bit more. We need to be 6300 AGL, we're 7800 right now. I gotta pick up some winds. So let's run through our pre landed checklist. Toronto, Mr. Rich, carb heat on. We do not have carb heat. Fuel pump on. Gas on the phone, standing lights on. Mixture fuel rich. Tell us put your seatbelt on. We're going for a landing. Maybe you'll eat them. Beautiful.
a little bit of a haze. Let's see, tower soft to the left. So the airport's right down there. I see the light 16 miles out. We have a tower that we're going to clear, and it's 3,000 on the 3,000 tower, so we're going to be at least 6,000. Or I should say it's 3,000 EV6 AGL, so. so I see the tower right ahead of us. Oops. Once we get in this valley, we'll go ahead and get a fraction. Still got going seven miles. Basically, we can follow that 
set. Pacific there, so that's oh, 800. Take off a lot of airspeed right now. And I'm kicking in the flaps. That's where you can get, get rid of all that airspeed. I'm going to set to 68 for our approach. Right there. Right at 70. The two white lights are a little high right now. Get on the glide slope where our cam's going. Use your throttle to get your nose up and down. Don't pitch. Pitching can get you in big trouble. Until it's getting nighttime here, cars got their lights on below us. up a little bit. Murrayfield traffic, Cessna 169, Julia pop on short final for runway 30, Murrayfield traffic. Okay, we'll get a little little peck here because uh, we're sitting nice we're at about 60 we need to get a little bit more throttle we don't need to stall I did this flight yesterday it was nice such a beautiful flight. Okay, I know we got the runway now.
bit rough on the landing. A little bit rough. Sorry, folks, for glad you had your seatbelts on. See, I don't like to lay on the brakes too hard. We just go to the end of the field here. Thank you for uh, flying with us on Pilot Dog's charter. We'll call it a charter. Okay. We'll call it a charter. I did that same shortcut yesterday on the Murrayfield traffic system 169 Julia Papa. Clear the active Murrayfield traffic. So let's do our after landing checklist. Landing lights off, fuel pumps off, flaps were up, transponder on standby, and we'll go ahead and park. on there. work in one day. Okay, avionics off, throttle, thousand mixture to cut off, lines off, electrics off, and secure the aircraft. Thank you.